Hello, 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 hello. Today we are having a quick look, and this is a super quick patch at how to develop a, a simple eye tracker using the cv.jit library. And specifically, we're going to be looking at cv.jit.centroids. So this is it here. We've got our movie coming in. And in this case, I've got a movie. You could use a live camera setup as long as you had it pointing in the right direction. I just can't get close enough to my laptop to do this. Uh, and all we do is we load our movie in. We lower the resolution of it a bit. We grayscale it, put in a threshold value, and then get centroids to draw the center point of the pupil for us. And we do that by inverting all our colors and up in the alpha scale so that black is now actually white. And because we drop the colors so low, black is the only color that gets through. And because the pupil is pure black, eh, it tracks the dead center point. And that's what we get out here from centroids is our X and Y coordinate of that little crosshair. So I'm going to boot up my new max window. I'm going to toggle. We're going to Q Metro. Timing doesn't matter as long as your frames per session is fast enough. Sometimes it can actually be beneficial to get a slower track here, depending on what you're wanting to use the information for. Uh, but if you're using it to see where people are looking, i.e. inverting the coordinates back onto a plane, then you would need a slightly faster refresh rate. I'm going to bring in my jit.qt.movie. And I'm going to give it a simple 320 by 240 resolution. Again, the higher the resolution, the more chance of noise and the more chance of more black, hence getting a poorer track. So I'm going to keep it low for this. Uh, I'm going to bring in a read message and a start message, because that's all I'll need. And then because we've got a nice big screen here, I'm going to jit.p window. I'm going to size it 320, 240, so it's the same size as our input video. So if I open that, uh, I've downloaded just this quick eye footage. Uh, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to vol zero, because I don't want to make any volume, any noise. So there we go, we've got our eye playing. Now, I'm going to duplicate this one time, and then we're going to pass our information through a jit.rgb to Luma. And if you're unfamiliar with this, all it does is it literally turns it grayscale. Now, and the reason we need it to grayscale is that's because jit.cv.jit.centroids uh, it's what it does is it's jobs in the title, so centroids gets a center point of a color, and in this case the color is white. And included with that, there is a patcher in the download, which is called draw, and if we put that into our, and with our original in the output, you can see that the center point's a bit off here, and that's because white is throughout the scene. So what we need to do is we need to edit jit.rgb to luma so that our black is what is white. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a threshold. And to do that I'm going to do a jit.operator and I'm going to do at op greater than. So if the value we set is greater than, uh, then let it pass through. And roughly 50 is what I tend to end up with, so I'm going to put that as my default. Pop in my integer, and then put that between my RGB to Luma and my centroids. So now when we start, and instead of looking at this one, let's add a fourth in between here now. So we can see that, again, white is what is the center point. So you can see it's down here because uh, there's the eyelash is causing a bit of black here. So if we turn that up until the pupil is all white, perfect. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert uh, my colors. Now I'm just going to bring up the RGB to Luma help here and take all of these. I'm going to paste them in. I'm just going to replace the cables that I've got going into this one. Uh, you don't really need to. You could add these four tree boxes, but I'm far too lazy for that. And then what we're going to do 
is we're going to invert our colors. So we don't want white. We want black to be white. So we settle our colors to negative. And if you do it by a value of over, say, three or four, then it means that no, n there's no leak through at all. But wait, I hear you say, Michael, that's still all black. We, we need a white section to be coming through to track. And for that, we just turn up our alpha a bit. And you can see, this is the value that RGB to Luma is now giving out. So that d deep, dark black is coming through as this gray because our, our values are so high. And then our operator, so our jet.op here, turns anything that is a slight color into a pure white. And that's where we're getting this great center track from. There is a little blemish where the eyebrow comes in, uh, but it, it doesn't make a difference to the track because of the way that cv.jet works. Now, if I was wanting my center points, all I need to do is unpack the two numbers that CV uh, dot jet puts out now obviously this is based purely on the size here so if we were to go up let's go up to the native resolution of this uh, footage you'll see that the values get much higher and the crosshair gets a lot smaller but still, it's given us a great track, still based on these values. So the one final thing I would do before saving and closing is I would put these into values. So I do a scale, 0 0.9, r scale, negative 3.8, negative 3.9 I'll get there eventually G scale negative 3.1 now I can see here if I set these all to negative 3 then it would probably still work fine but I don't want to argue with the computer and the last thing I would do is I would load bang that message into my RGB to Luma so now no matter when I start it it's going to be set up right. And I would also add a load uh, load mess 19 into here because that's the value that I settled on. Now obviously this is quite specific to this one video but you can see how it's adaptable to any situation because as long as you can set up your camera like this so that the eye is well lit enough and the pupil isn't too dark otherwise you need to adjust these even more you'll get away with it nine out of 10 times. Where the pupil and the iris are really dark, you just need to play about with these scales here. Turning up the alpha can help because this is pure black, whereas around here there will always be color leaking in. And that's it, that's the super quick uh, iris tracker or eye tracker using the CV.jet library.